And we actually, we were boyfriend and girlfriend and we lived together. So now I'm in the house and I'm like, sorry, uh, I'm not gonna sleep in that bed. I'm gonna sleep on the floor. She's like, what? I said, you know, you wanna get married? I said, I'm not ready. I said, I'm not ready to go to hell. <laughs> You know, I'm not going to go to hell for you. You're going to go by yourself. I go by myself. Okay, you know. So, so I took the Quran and I read the yeah, I, I I chose the story, the, one of the strongest surah. I read surah Tawbah. I read surah Tawbah all night. I and mean, I sat on the floor. I was reading Quran. I said, if God said in the Bible, in the Quran, that it is better that what Allah orders is marriage. Allah orders marriage having children, right? And then taking care of that family, not just having children for the sake of saying, I have many children, but to, to contribute to society, to make society better. Are we gonna be part of the problem or are we gonna be part of the solution? We should make the intention to be part of the solution. Everybody has a role to play, not just one person, everybody. Okay, next question. So if your friend has a bad reputation, advise them, right? Advise them and inshallah and see if it's really bad and they're doing bad things, then be careful. You shouldn't take an unnecessary risk. How did you meet your wife? And was she a Muslim or did you met her? Okay, mashallah. That's a good one. So actually, when that relationship after we became Muslim didn't work. Yani the, the sister did accept Islam and we did get married. But alhamdulillah, Allah prescribed. So later on, you know, I, I was by myself for one year and I chose not to. And honestly, it was very challenging because I used to walk in the streets. Sometimes I'm talking to a brother, you know, an older brother, very religious, and we're talking in the street. All of a sudden, I turn like this, and somebody kisses me in my cheek, and I'm like, okay, like, uh, I, you know, like, it was all of a sudden, like, I didn't know. So some girls don't understand. So I went, sometimes I'm with, I'm with the same brother, because we're working in the same store, and I'm outside in the street, and I see the girl, and I'm like, this girl don't understand. I would run inside the store and hide just to avoid that unnecessary kiss. Yeah. So, alhamdulillah, I waited for one year, and I, I met my wife. She also accepted Islam. And we met in the mosque. And alhamdulillah, after, you know, having some uh, older sisters and mother and friends, they organized, you know, they, they set us up and, and we ended up getting married. Alhamdulillah. Did any of your friends accept Islam after you? From the game? Oh, did you make? Egypt and came back, 
Whenever he visited the mosque, I used to translate for him. And one day he said, I want to go meet your mom. He's like, why? He said, because I'm proud of you. Because you have changed so much that I want to tell your mom, you know, to congrat congratulate her for, you know, you not ending up in jail and not ending up getting killed. So he walked with me in the street right before it was behind my back or something. I was walking side by side and he goes to meet my mom just to tell her that, you know, I'm proud of your son and that's it. Exactly what part of the Quran made you convert to Islam? Yeah, this is a small book, mashallah. Uh, 6,616 verses, yeah. And yeah, let me see. Uh, well, one of the verses was the the one in Biyaka Na'budu wa Yaka Nasta'in and then Asrat al Mustaqim from Surah Al Fatiha. You know, you will only worship and you will only be asked for help. Uh, guide us to the straight path. So and then the other other verses that came up, that I came across that show me that Allah is forgiven, that Allah is merciful, that Allah is the all powerful. These verses made me really believe in the Quran and gave me hope. These verses really gave me hope. And the thing is, I won't. I think it's the whole Quran. What really helped me come to Islam was befriending the Quran. And just to give you a little bit of information, when the other when I asked Shaykh Shabriti the question, and he said, number one, look at your companion, if it's no good, don't hesitate in leaving it. Right? And second, Sohbat al Quran. Make the Quran your friend. And you will not be misguided. You will never be misguided. And third, learn the Arabic language because majority of the books are in Arabic and the ulama are in the books. And he said, fourth, learn how to deal with the Sunnah. Learn about the Prophet so that you can understand practically how to implement the Quran. How can I introduce Islam to my Catholic friend in a way that does not offend them? Well, one, one tip, one tip is to become familiar with what are the beliefs in Catholicism. To understand. Well, I'll give you a recommendation. There is a book in English and it might, it might be in another language as well by, uh, by uh, Dr. Abu Amin Bilal Phillips. He uh, accepted Islam over 30 years ago, originally from Jamaica. He graduated from, from Medina and Tunawara. And he, he also established a free online university. So Abu Amin Bilal Phillips, he wrote a book, a little book, called The Religion of Truth. The Religion of Truth. If you type it up on Google, you'll find it for free. I recommend everybody to read it. It's a small little booklet, right? And in that book, honestly, many people have accepted Islam. It's a very simple book, straight to the point. Many people worldwide, why do I say worldwide? Because, because we didn't have many of those books. So we took the one that we had and we made it into CDs. And we, and we distributed in South America, even in Australia, Spain, everywhere. Mashallah, many, many people have accepted Islam because of, of course, Allah is the one that guides. But that, that, that the information it is very clear, it's brief and, and easy to understand. I think that's one way to, to help them uh, learn about Islam. What made you go to Egypt and study Islam and be an Imam? Well, when
when I was learning about Islam, I felt a desire to understand it. So I went to, uh, I went to, uh, I got a scholarship to go study in Egypt. But the reason I wanted to go to Egypt was so that I could understand the Quran. I wanted to understand the Quran in Arabic. I did not want to be at the mercy of somebody telling me what the Quran means. I wanted to understand the way Allah speaks in Arabic. So I made the effort and Alhamdulillah I got the scholarship. I went to Egypt and was blessed. Now in regards of being an Imam, I think you know the word Imam is very broad, right? And you have an Imam whose specialty is leading Salah. You have an Imam who gives the rules. You have an Imam who focuses on Dawah. So there's different things. So I didn't uh, go to Egypt to become an Imam. It's just being a leader and, and, and teaching and all that. Allah blessed me with the, with the position. And even the term Imam, even the term Imam, sometimes I have a, a, a problem with it. And the reason why is because it, it's like you say, to somebody who, who is learning medicine, doctor, right? Like, for example, you have Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmed, Imam Abu Hanifa, who live their life studying and learning and teaching for Allah's cause. I'm nowhere near them. I maybe got a, less than a drop of that knowledge. So to use the same title is doing an injustice to them, right? And the same way we, you know, you're using the sheikh, 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 or anybody that comes and gives a speech, sheikh. No, so we're, we're nowhere near, like, you know, sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah and others who lived their life, went to prison, suffered and studied and learned, and men like, you know, many shiuk that have made efforts. So I, alhamdulillah, like for the sake of Allah, you know, sometimes in my locality to identify me, that's, but I personally like to be a servant of Allah. When Allah sent the, 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 the Quran to the Prophet he didn't say a big name, right? He says, alhamdulillah, anzara ala abdi al kitaba wa lam all praise is due to the one who sent to his slave, servant, the book, and then placed there in no crookedness. So if, uh, if the Prophet is called a slave, should I be called better than the Prophet? Of course not. So we are all slaves and servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think everyone, is my advice, should make an effort to learn Arabic. Everyone should make an effort to understand the Quran. And I'm not saying just read the Quran. You want to get benefits, Ramadan comes. One month, you're behind Tarawiyah. You want to make that prayer meaningful? If you understand when Allah is talking to you, then you get benefits and it makes you stay longer. If, if you don't understand, you want, man, when is the Imam going to finish? Right? I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. You start thinking about everything, mashallah. Your memory comes back in salah. You remember everything that you forgot in life. So that's why I think if you understand the meaning, it can really benefit you spiritually. So I highly advise right now, in six classes, in six classes, you know, I have taught a, a sister who just became Muslim how to read Arabic. You know, and, and people are hungry, sisters from Mexico, from different parts of Latin America, learning Arabic. Yeah. I taught 11 sisters, alhamdulillah. Ya I taught 11 sisters to read Arabic. But everybody can do it. It's not too hard. Allah is able to help us learn.
Last one. Do you, did you ever hesitate uh, about Islam? Is that the question? Did you ever hesitate about Islam? Well, basically, when I understood that Islam is not a name of just a religion, but it's action and it's, it's doing. Like, for example, when you travel, how do you say travel in Arabic? Can anybody tell me? I can't hear anybody. It's Yara. So, huh? Siyara, Safa. Safa, okay. And if somebody travels, brothers are a little bit louder than the girls. Like, girls don't talk. Anybody knows what does traveler mean in Arabic? Musa, very good, mashallah. Engineering. How do you say engineering in Arabic? Engineering. And that's that. And the person who does and that's that, right, is a Muhandis. So the person that does that, you add M-U, Muhandis. Safar, Musafir, right? So the person that does, you add M-U. Islam. The person who submits in Islam, you add M-U, he's a Muslim. Not the person who was born in Islam. The person who does it. The person who prays, the person who reads Quran, the person who fasts, the person who's honest. Right? So, you ask Allah, there's a dua, please pay attention. Allah, uh, the Prophet used to say in sujood, Ya muqallib al-qulub, wal absar thabbit qulub an ala Oh you who controls the vision, the heart and the vision, make a heart firm in your religion. Why? Because the hearts change. Right? The hearts, today I have Iman, today I pray, today I feel good, tomorrow I didn't pray all my prayers. My Iman, and then I'm like, oh, why am I feeling like this? Oh, you didn't pray, you didn't read Quran, you, right? So, since our hearts change, so you ask Allah, the one who controls the hearts, that bit, make the hearts firm, ala dinik, upon your religion. Not my religion, this is not my Islam, it, it is Allah's way of life. So Islam is a way of life, it's a lifestyle, it's a way of life, not just a religion for four walls. Islam, is, if it's implemented as a way of life, it could change all this place. I will give you a story and I will conclude because it's time to go. But Imam Siraj wa Hajj. Anybody know Imam Siraj wa Hajj? Some of you. Imam Siraj wa Hajj lived in Bedford, Brooklyn. In, right, one of the worst places in Brooklyn, New York. And in that street, they used to sell drugs, they used to have prostitution, violence, all that stuff. The Muslims, right, were stood up men that became Muslim, that came from that neighborhood, went in front of every other store, and they stayed there. When the drug dealers wanted to sell drugs, they said, not here. When the pimp wanted to sell a girl, not here. And they cleaned up the whole street. Now, I would recommend, you want, it, you want for to see it? Take a trip to Brooklyn, go to Masjid Taqwa, and you see the streets. Halal restaurants, halal stores. You hear the Adan outside in New York. The Adan outside and Lord on a regular day is packed. The Masjid is packed. They were willing to sack. Look at this. The criminals used to go to the police department and they said, the Muslims don't leave us alone. They came, the criminals, the drug dealers, the pimps went to the police and said, 
the Muslims don't leave us alone. And they cleaned up that street. It happened in Brooklyn, it happened in Atlanta, and it happens in other places. If Islam is practiced outside, it brings benefit. You don't have to say much. You have to be much. You don't have to say you're a Muslim. You have to be a Muslim. You don't have to get angry when somebody disrespects the Quran. You have to stop disrespecting the Quran. You have to stop cursing in front of the Quran. You have to stop lying in front of the Quran. Why am I looking at somebody else that disrespects the Quran if I'm not respecting the Quran? You're closer than them. Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change the condition of what's in their hearts. Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change the condition of that which is in their hearts. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Allah Alaihi Wasallam, Alhamdulillah Rabbil